Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. I'm Julia Patrick, your host today, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, joined today by two superstar rock star folks in our sector, Angela Barnes, MBA CFRE from Carter Global, and Jack Alato, CFRE from Fundraising Academy. Hey, welcome, you guys. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Nice. You know, it's really exciting to have this conversation with you and to kind of give everybody a framework. We had this discussion at the beginning of the year um, before you had presented anywhere. You were on your way to AFP um, ICON and you were going to be talking about this. And I think it's caused so much conversation that we wanted to get you back. And we really wanted to have a conversation about what the impacts uh you're experiencing are and so i'm really honored that you would come back and share with us what's occurred with this conversation i'm also really excited to let you know that we have amazing presenting sponsors and they include bloomerang american nonprofit academy nonprofit thought leader staffing boutique your part-time controller 180 management group fundraising academy at national university jmt consulting and nonprofit tech talk can you tell where Jack Alato hails from? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I love Angela. Definitely. Go. <laughs> hey, you know, we have really assembled an amazing cohort of co-hosts, as well, I like to say. And I hope you've been able to get to meet them and, and enjoy them. They come from all over this country. They do a lot of different things in the nonprofit sector. And uh, they have just been an amazing addition to the nonprofit show. Another amazing addition is Angela Barnes from Carter Global, Jack Alato, Fundraising Academy. Okay, you two, amazing talents. You're not in the same cities. You work together in a different capacity. Um, talk to us about how this got started. And so we can kind of understand what has happened and, and why we need to be talking about bad behavior uh, when it comes to our donors. Sure, and Julia, Julia, again, thanks so much for having us. It's always a pleasure to be on your show and to reach audiences and talk about mm -hmm. tough subjects such as donor behavior and when it's gone bad. So Jack and I started having this conversation about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was something that within our sector, we had talked about behind closed doors. We had not talked about publicly, or we had talked about with consultants, third party individuals. Slowly but surely, things have started steeping out within the media itself. And some of the behavior has come into the spotlight. Yeah. Even before Jack and I uh, fully presented about, uh, about this topic. Um, the feedback we've gotten is tremendous. We're excited about the next steps that are happening out there, but we'd like to be clear that this is a subject that we're talking about, but it's gone on for decades yeah. within the sector. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. If go I ahead, could, Jack. Yeah, right, go ahead. Add to that, you know, AFP did that study, I think it was in 2018 or 2017. And that really got me thinking about it. And the study was on sexual harassment, mm -hmm. not only on the part of donors, but also on the part of board members and other staff people. So it got me thinking, what, you know, what's going on here? Why is this happening? And what are we maybe doing that is, is part of the cause of it? Yes. So um, mm -hmm. that's really where our, our conversation really got into the depth of, Angela and I uh, on what we were talking about. And as you mentioned, Julia, we did present at the AFP conference in Toronto. A lot of people attended. We had a packed room. So obviously people are thinking about that. And if I could brag, Angela, we got great reviews. I've seen the reviews. <laughs> and you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who needs those positive <laughs> affirmations after anything. And certainly a couple other things that happened, correct? And yes, we were. I, I was shocked that we got great reviews, not because Jack and I are horrible presenters, because <laughs> it's a topic where people are, are, are coming. They were giving their opinions. They were providing mm -hmm. feedback in real time and they are being vulnerable with their stories. Yeah. And in this sector, I'm sure, Julia, 
as you know, we are positive, positive, positive to the point where we don't talk about our challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. I love that you said that because, you know, we talk about positive mindset and we talk about, you know, sloughing off those negative things. And if you didn't, you know, get a win today, you're going to get a win tomorrow and mm -hmm. all of that. And, and I think it's a framework that so many of us and in the sector live and breathe and we model for our employees. And I think the other thing too is, especially I think for women, when mm -hmm. something goes south, we yes. tend to be like, well, what did we do? Yes. Did we wear something too revealing? Did yes. we, should we not have touched them? Should we not have, you right. know, hugged them? Should we not have been, um, you know, meeting them in a, in a place that was more private? I mean, it, it just a, bajill a bajillion things that go on in our minds. And then, you know. Yeah. And I, I think part of the problem has been, and Ange could speak to this because she, she knows about organizational boundaries, is that when women or men have gone mm -hmm. to their leadership and said, hey, this thing happened to me yes. because of our dependence on resources. Yes. Some leaders have said, look, let's get just get the money. Keep, you know, keep <laughs> this to yourself. Let's not make a big deal about this that has been so damaging to wow. women and men as mm -hmm. as it relates to raising money yeah it's awful and yeah. you know i think we have that problem yeah. in sales um across the board for for-profit mm -hmm. and non-profit we mm -hmm. we do you know in order to make the sale we kind of look the other way and we think okay i'll just set myself up for a different environment so i don't get I don't, that doesn't happen again. And that does not stop the behavior. I mean, no. No. you know, did you have folks coming up and saying, oh my God, this happened to me and kind of sharing their stories like that they've never been able to witness it before? We did. We actually asked for a story where we were in the middle of a presentation and a gentleman gave um, a tale that Jack and I did not expect to hear during the presentation yeah. where he was working with a donor and could not uh, service. The donor made a request for a document and this individual could not send the document over the over a holiday, a national holiday. Mm -hmm. And the donor called every hour on the hour, mm -hmm. harassing this individual, demanding this document to the mm -hmm. point where this individual thought that the job was at stake and decided to pull over, send the document, and that was the end of it until it happened again. Yeah. So we've had stories like that told publicly, and then the ones that have been told privately have just been, um, Jack and I are not shocked, but it's still, when you're watching them relive the tale, yeah. it's yeah. hard. It, yeah. It's hard. You can see it in their face. Jack, what about you? Is yeah, you I, you know, I think that, you know, the PTSD that comes from yeah. especially yeah. women who have been sexually harassed and afraid, uh, uh, fearful of what could happen, you know. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, we we see the problem and I'm sure the three of us could talk about things that we've seen in our own career mm -hmm. Board members yelling at staff people. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, just horrible, horrible Goodness. stories. Yeah. Goodness. So, but I think, I think, Ange, that one thing that we're, we talked about, which I thought was well received, and I'll leave you to talk about it, is really a donor code of ethics. It's really time for our donors to sign a donor code of ethics. Agreed. And, and taking a couple of steps back, Jack and Julia, we are not saying that it is the nonprofit's fault that the behavior is arising. What we are saying is we have control over how we minimize that type of behavior right. within the sector. So we're able to take ownership. And one of the things we said throughout the presentation, if you see something and you're able to identify it, label it, you can fix it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're not helpless. We simply need a couple of documents that would help us greatly in this sector. And Jack and I talked about this. First is having organizational boundaries, a document where across the board, everyone in the organization understands these are the boundaries. This is how we engage with donors. 
This is how we're going to allow advancement, development, or the fundraising department to lead the cause. We're all going to check in. We won't have donor visits alone in someone's house. We'll take yeah. someone with us. This is a whole list of things. Right. And then how we communicate those boundaries, Julia, yeah. is through our donor code of ethics. So when you look at the fundraising cycle and the donor journey, right now, we have a set of expectations in place um, through AFP that discusses how what the donor can, can expect from a, a nonprofit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything in place as to how a nonprofit can communicate what the nonprofit will expect from the donor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So completing that circle, we believe would be extremely helpful in minimizing the cases of racial, sexual, and just general harassment across the board. Right. Jack, any thoughts you'd like to add to that? I, you know, the, the thing that comes to mind is, you know, one of the things, the documents that you mentioned, they're meant to build trust mm -hmm. on the part of the donor. They have to trust the nonprofit is going to use their gift in the way it's intended. But that goes the other way as well. Yeah. As fundraisers, we have to be able to trust that when we go meet with a donor, whether it's in a public place or wherever it is, that they are going to understand that there are certain guidelines that we think that they should follow. And you know the thing people say, well, donors aren't going to like this. Guess what? Donors are waiting for this conversation. Mm -hmm. They're not crazy. And we're not talking about the majority of donors here. Yeah. We're probably talking about a much smaller uh, section of donors, but mm -hmm. donors who really care about us, our organizations, our missions, who we are as people and fundraisers, they're going to, they're going to say about time. Yeah. You know, I, I ha we had a really interesting uh, guest on in the last couple of weeks and he talked about um, kind of like the, the self-esteem of an organization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And how we can say to ourselves, you know, I, we're worth it and we are a good investment. And I almost feel like it's an advocacy issue that um, we support our teams and ourselves like we do our client, we clients, you know, and it, it can follow the trajectory of um, our integrity, our value system, um, things that sometimes are a little bit unspoken, but mm -hmm. you might pick up on that cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I feel like it just speaks it amplifies the sense of how we perceive our the ecosystem of our organization, how we're going to advocate for our employees, how we're going to advocate for our clients and for our stakeholders, and how we're going to walk the walk of how we believe you know, behavior should be. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's an okay thing. I really do. Now, you know, if if there's if it's bad business for somebody um, and their behavior, it's bad business across the board. Mm -hmm. Right. This isn't a one off. I think bad behavior, right. it, it's like it, it doesn't just happen when you get the check. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been talking too long. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, yes. Yes. And <laughs> yes. And. So, yes, it's bad behavior across the board within that organization. A donor, what Jack and I have highlighted is that a donor doesn't necessarily step in in a dominant position the first day it meets with an organization or that donor or a board member joins the board or a volunteer decides to volunteer. It's a series of steps that happen over the lifetime of the relationship that is built. What Jack and I are saying is there is power within the nonprofit to determine how to build a sustainable and safe relationship with a donor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how we speak with them, the terms we use to refer to them. Yeah. How we set our boundaries is very much linked, Julia, like you said. That's incredible to self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the yes and part, the and part of this is you'd be surprised that one donor may have what is considered poor behavior, bad behavior with one nonprofit, yet they're very different with another nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Because there's boundaries in place. That's there's right. expectations. That's the right. same thing that a donor may contribute to a major capital campaign with one organization that they may only give a hundred dollars to another. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That engagement. Sure. That's what counts. Right. And I think Julia, back to our earlier point that you made is that the first place where we articulate this, the don't the boundaries that we're talking about, as well as a donor code of ethics is when we get that first gift and we send that welcome packet out, mm -hmm. which many people send a welcome packet to their new donors, which include, you know, AFP code of ethics, standards of behavior. Mm -hmm. Let's put that donor code of ethics in there. Let's put some written document about the organizational boundaries that we have so that it's not a surprise to them later on yeah. when 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 some bad behavior happens. Start right. at the very beginning. I love that. And I think it's just such a um, you know, it's a professional approach mm -hmm. to something mm -hmm. that a lot of folks might not even understand. Um, whether or not they're involved is is not the issue. It's just, you know, so many people don't understand anything about the nonprofit sector, right? Because we only know what we know, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I love this idea of, of elevating the conversation and saying, you know, this is what we expect of you. This is what we expect of ourselves, of our sector. Um, it, it's pretty it's pretty powerful stuff. And I yeah. think it needs to be, you know, moving ahead. Um, so you make these presentations, you go out, I mean, AFP is, uh, we had Mike Geiger on right, right after, I think right after ICON. Um, he even brought it up. Really interesting stuff. So people are coming out of the woodwork, probably some of them sharing their stories for the first time. Uh, and that had to be kind of hair curling for everybody to hear these things. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing? Like what this has been a short period of time where, as we said earlier, you know, a can of worms has been opened up and seen the light. What's going to happen and what how is this burbling up? So what Jack and I, um, he was just genius in this thought of helping people launch the conversation with their organizations. Mm -hmm. So we gave them a starting point, Julia, where they could launch a conversation and just a review of the template of the donor code of ethics or just kicking the can around of, hey, what, what do you think about uh, our boundaries? What would you say organizationally are some boundaries we would have with our donors? What's a line too far? How do we communicate that? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the sparks that we've heard. And getting feedback after a presentation is one thing everybody's is hyped up. We've got these warm fuzzies. We walk out, we go into another presentation. <laughs> we get more warm fuzzies, Julia, you know how it is. But what we love is that we've actually seen people take this and run with it. Yeah. So it's not just a feeling, it's an action. And yeah. this was our call to action that Jack and I made. Take these documents, have the conversations. Here's your starting point. And people are like, yeah, we did it. The conversation right. was a little tough, but we're going to keep at it. And now they know that they can proactively reduce this behavior, stop it. Again, this was not a presentation to help you stop this in the midst of it happening. This was how to curtail it in the future. Right. You know, and, you know, one thing that, you know, we've seen, uh, Angela and I were interviewed by the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Love it. And it was a great article about a nonprofit executive director who returned a large gift mm -hmm. because of the way the donor treated the fundraiser or some other professional in the organization. I can't remember, but, yeah. but the way the donor acted, their behavior. Mm -hmm. And I thought that took so much courage mm -hmm. because we're dependent on resources from donors to advance our mission. But at mm -hmm. some point we have to say, donors or a donor, you've gone too far. Mm -hmm. And it's not worth keeping the money to to uh, to put our ethics aside. As human I beings, think, it's just not. Right. And I think it needs to be uh, witnessed that this is something we can do. 
you know, for a lot of organizations, that would be like, what? I never even thought of that. You know, I thought I just had to suffer through and kind of insulate myself from any contact that might come up with this, you know, with this uh, donor. And, And no, I agree. I think it's a really bold thing to even consider. And I think it's a it's a teaching moment for your staff and your development. I mean, I think that CEO that goes before their team and says, look, I value you and I I have a a standard that I want to, you know, lead and maintain. And this is part of that standard that if this is not working um, and there's, you know, some of these issues, then then we sever the relationship and we return to them. Yeah, absolutely, Julia. And just to add on to that, when we talk about the term high value, high Mm -hmm. value donor, Mm -hmm. is that donor of high value to the organization? Does that donor treasure the mission, visions, and values? Is it in line with the donors? Yeah. And will that donor give to you, or are we just chasing high donors, high yeah. value donors? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Just little languages like that that tie back mm-hmm. into what you're saying is will a CEO step in front of a team and say, you know what, we're no longer chasing high value donors. We want to attract and build relationship with donors who want to help us drive the mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful point. I love that point, Angela. Yeah. yeah, it's just beautiful. Well, and it's, you know, Angela, your comment is so, so much more sustainable and strategic, right? Yes. It's not a one and done. It's not mm-hmm. a quid pro quo. It mm-hmm. is, it goes back to the cause selling cycle it, that Fundraising Academy, yep. you know, um, navigates us through and and how we build those relationships and that we understand you know um under the value of that relationship Mm -hmm. um so it's really interesting i almost i was thinking about our conversation before we came on air i almost feel like this is a time when maybe we could have this discussion more fruitfully than we could others because Mm -hmm. of the pandemic we weren't out and about and now we're going to be more interfacing have you have you seen that like people are like oh yeah we need to have this conversation versus you know five years ago have you is this a time for change or for reflection angela what do you think about that it's a it's an interesting time so the giving usa report has dropped Mm-hmm. And we've seen individual uh, giving go down to 63%. I remember when I was saying it was 80%. Okay. And now uh, the bulk of we're seeing donations funneled to foundations that are given out through donor advised funds. Right. So yeah. to me, it's a tougher conversation because individual giving has decreased and people want to keep their donors online. But we're looking at an incremental decrease as opposed to building a long-term relationship, like you just said, Julia, Mm -hmm. all right? This is something, building sustainable relationships with donors who are invested in helping you fuel your mission, not just put a name on a building or Mm -hmm. um, attain a board seat for their resume to build their resume up or volunteer in this capacity because it looks good. They actually Mm -hmm. want to do the work. They want to help the organization do the work. So I think it's a tough time to have this conversation, but I will say this, Julia, I think people are at their wits end. Yep. Yeah. Jack, what do you think? I think it's about values. I -hmm. think that we have to attract donors who share our values. Yes. And if they share our values, there's going to be a synergy. They're going to care about Mm -hmm. our mission. They're going to make this to us at all different levels. Mm -hmm. If they do not share our values, we should reject their gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's about ethics and they have to share Mm -hmm. our ethics of of treating people correctly, rightly, respectfully. That's really important. Ethics Mm -hmm. and values are really the key. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, Jack. And that's, I love how you always bring us back to center. It's ethics ethics and values. And if they're not in alignment, which is what the donor code of ethics ensures, Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be this tug of war, right? That's going on. I want to, I want to fund a, a program that you don't have, so I'm going to need you to acquire staff, yeah, funding once this this runs out, and then others, and also it may not be in line with your mission, right? So it's like 
you know what, maybe we're not in alignment and that's okay. There are a number of organizations you can go to. It's just that with this organization, we're fueling this mission. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's an interesting conversation because again, as Jack, you know, was talking about, it does go back to the relationship aspect so that if you are knowing your donor and your donor is able to know you, you can really be rowing in the same direction. But if you're just looking at a big check, um, yeah. it seems to me that's where this can all go sideways. Yeah. And that's transactional giving. Mm -hmm. That's really the transactional. And it's it's not, a, as far as I'm concerned, it's not really a benefit to the clients we serve mm -hmm. as well as the people who work in the organization or the mission. You know, the interesting thing, Julia, since we were on last time, I am so happy that people feel that they could come forward mm -hmm. and say, hey, guess what? This is my story. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to me. This is a, a board member who yelled and screamed at me. And, yeah. or, or this is a, a, a donor who, who, you know, criticized me publicly or a fellow staff person. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. really, it's sort of like the Me Too mo moment for, mm -hmm. for fundraisers. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. And it's about time, guys. I, I agree, Jack. It, this is, we say this is a tough conversation, but I think Jack, would you agree? This has been a liberating conversation Absolutely. for a Absolutely. lot of people, Julia, who um, we also have an article that's coming out in October in advancing philanthropy regarding this very topic. And so people have either seen the presentation or now they're going to read about it it's liberating. They can say, you know what, that did happen to me. And this is how I felt. And maybe this, these are the steps that I can ensure this doesn't happen again. Absolutely. Well, the two of you are amazing. And I'm just so honored that you would come on. And, and, and I love that we've kind of followed the trajectory of this. So this conversation is not over, my friends. <laughs> I'm really excited to see, you know, how this plays out. Um, it's not a one and done. That's right. You know, I mean, this is a, a conversation that we need to be having and supporting. Angela Barnes with Carter. You can find Angela at car carter.global. Jack Alato, Fundraising Academy. Find Jack at fundraising-academy.org. Um, two of our brilliant thought leaders in the nonprofit sector. I am so honored that you would come on and, and share with us what you started and where it's going and um we look forward to even learning more because this is a conversation that i've got to believe is going to be made whole the more we talk about it right, right. you know mm -hmm. um because it's somewhat shameful people are like well you know what did i do how did this go sideways um and so yeah and and so it's interesting too to hear the both of you speak there's an internal pressure and there's external pressure as well. Mm -hmm. You know, going back to your CEO or your development director and and they're like, don't screw it up. We need the money. Right. Yep. Right. Tough. I mean, really a tough, tough thing. So the two of you, the dynamic duo, thank you so much for coming on and being with us. Um, we'll, we'll continue this conversation with you. Another thing that we want to make sure that we recognize is the continued support that we have of our presenting sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can have these illuminating conversations thought-provoking conversations that ultimately will all help us achieve our mission, vision, and values. And I would say to the two of you, you know, illuminate our integrity and, and the professionalism of our sector, within our sector. We don't talk about that enough. That's right. Mm -hmm. We really, we really don't. Well, as we end every episode of The Nonprofit Show, we like to leave with this, me this message. And today it really means something different to me. Um, and the message goes like this to stay well so you can do well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.